Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name's Jess. If you're new here, I'm really glad you're here. If you're not new here, also glad you're here. Uh, today we are out here in the garden I'm about to go into the greenhouse and we're going to have Will teach us something that I think is extremely valuable and that everybody should know no matter how large or small your garden is. Got a little background noise going on um, with some garden bed construction. So we're gonna come in here. Sir. Good morning. Our teacher for the day, Mr. Kunkel. Here I am. Here he is. I'm about to drown these little wormies. Feel oh. bad for him. Could should we put him in the garden? I mean we could. It's there are a lot of them. <laughs> I got to the center. I was doing these and they they went all to the center and I just busted into them. Here, I'll get a container if you see any. You can throw it on there and I'll go put it in the garden. We here. can save the wormies. We'll try to. All right, so some of you may recall that at the beginning of this year, uh, we ended up getting some soil that was contaminated with what we believe to be aminopyrrolids, which stunted the garden quite a lot. And instead of taking all that soil out and tossing it to the side and getting new soil, we decided we wanted to rehab that. And one of the things that we did to do that was by making um, compost tea out of worm castings. And this is something Will had been doing prior to coming to work here. I don't, had you done it on this scale? Had you made like bigger? Yeah, usually about Yeah, about okay, about so this is what you had been doing. The cool thing about doing this is that uh, you can make a lot of compost in a small space. And anybody can keep a little worm farm. My friend Natalie, uh, her channel is Hey It's a Good Life. She's done a really cool course on this if you wanted to have somebody hold your hand as far as like getting into worm farming, keeping worms and all that stuff. I'll put a link to that down below. But today uh, what we're doing is making a big barrel of worm casting tea. All right, well, will you tell us what you're doing here? So these are the bags that we're going to, it's basically we're using this like a tea bag Mm -hmm. and uh, these are six micron bags i think i'm actually going to start using paint strainer bags apparently a lot of people use paint they're a lot bigger and you just get those at like home depot or well some sort. i tried to get them yesterday and nowhere had them so oh. i ordered them on amazon um let me go get my notes real quick yeah try. all right so this is a 55 gallon drum um from a lot of the videos i watched they say do one and a half to two pounds of compost or worm castings per five gallons. So that would be about 20 pounds of worm castings that we're gonna use. But since we're not gonna fill it all the way up, we're just gonna use like however much is in this bucket, which I would guess is, uh, I don't know, what would you guess it is, 15 pounds? Yeah. Probably about 15 pounds. Yeah. Um, you're supposed to dilute it anyways, like one to one. So if you put this in a, back sp a backpack sprayer, you're supposed to fill it up 50% and then fill it up the rest of the way with water. So if it's a little bit uh, weak, that's fine anyways. We're still yeah. getting microbes and nutrients from it. <clears throat> yeah, so it's not an exact science. If you watch videos of this online, people make it a hundred different ways. Yeah. So you got Korean natural farming methods and then just people that do their own stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's really hard to burn your plants and we're we're going lower than, than what's recommended anyway, so right. we're not going to burn anything. Uh, one thing you want to use well water, if you have city water or something, you need to let it dechlorinate because there's chlorines in city waters and, and that will actually kill off the microbes. That's the purpose of the chlorine in the first place is to kill off microbes. So if you have city water, just let it sit for 24 hours before you use it. Sometimes people put uh, bubblers in the city water and apparently that makes it dechlorinate quicker. So what do we have today that we're doing this with? We got the six micron. Six micron filter bags, which I've been bagging them up right there, but. Um, we have some worm castings. Worm castings. Will here. brought these from his worm farm at his house. Yeah, have a chest freezer. And okay. then some molasses. Molasses. We have some fish emulsion. I like Let's Neptune's, see. yeah, fish and seaweed emulsion. This is Neptune's Harvest Organic. This is my favorite brand of that. And as of as of right, yeah. which this is um, used as a, a fertilizer. It's basically mineral from mm -hmm. volcanic yeah. soil and ash and all of that yeah. stuff, which adds a lot of minerals too. Yeah, I think we're gonna use about a cup of that. 
and just a little splash of the seaweed, a little bit of molasses. Uh, I'm doing it most like the Nature's Always Right video. I, okay. I forgot what that guy's name is, but he, he did this. He did not add molasses to his, um, but pretty much everything else okay. was uh, inspired by a lot of his videos. So Awesome. We'll link that too. Yes. We have a 55 gallon drum. And we do have well water here, so we're just gonna be putting it directly in the 55 gallon drum. We don't have to do any sort of like dechlorinating or anything like that. But like Will said, if you are on city water, you would wanna let this sit for at least a day before you do this. All right, so the, the next thing you're gonna need, this is to make your mixture, but to actually aerate the tea, we're using uh, the, all this all this material right here came from uh, no-till growers. He did a video on these on like the pump setup and everything Electric cool magnetic good? air pump. Yep uh, and You can do this on a smaller scale if you just want to make a five gallon bucket and you can use like an aquarium bubbler This is obviously to do a much larger scale. So this is some, a product that's made specifically for this You can use this for a five gallon bucket too. Yeah Obviously, it just plugs in right here. This tubing, I believe this was sold with the pump, is set up with this contraption right here where you can add and, and take off hoses and you can turn off the air. Mm. Um, and this, you just set this outside your compost tee. And these tubings, this is quarter inch tubing. Yeah, quarter inch tubing that's hooked to these air stones. The tubing bends up like that, so it ends up going to awkward places in the barrel. So I would literally just tie rocks. Yeah. Tie rocks to it. I mean, I guess you could tie bricks or something to yeah. it as well. Just some sort of weight to hold it down. Awesome. Because you want these, you want the air stones as close to the bottom as possible. Okay. You don't want to have the air stones at the top because you're not aerating the stuff below. So keep right. keep the air stones as far as close to the bottom as possible. And then the last thing that we have, we have all the ingredients: the bubbler or aerator, the drum. And then this is something that Will kind of just came up with. This is just a piece of utility panel, cattle panel, woodwork. And this is where he ties the bags of compost to yeah. hold them into the water. So yeah, and it'll just sit right on top. So sit imagine. Like that. And you want the bags dangling in the middle. You don't want the, the bags on the edges. It might not, it might go anaerobic if it's like up against the plastic edge. You want all the bags to where the, the air bubbles are coming up around them. You so fully them. submerged, not touching the edge, the bubbles coming around. Yeah, and, and in the middle of the barrel, pretty much. You don't want them you know, too close yeah. to the top or too close to the bottom. So the point of making compost tea is that we need microbes in our soil. People be like, oh, I have bad soil. There isn't bad soil. You may have soil that doesn't have a lot of life in it, but any of that can be amended. So when people are like, oh, I can't grow, I have clay. Really, it's just that you have a lot of parent material, um, a lot of geology, you have a lot of, of the earth that doesn't have life in it. And so you need to add biology, which is life into your soil. And this is a fantastic way to do this. So when you take, obviously like this material, this is worm castings, this is full of microbes. And when we take this and we make tea out of it, it multiplies the microbes by... Like a thousand fold. Like a thousand fold. I mean, just massively. By taking 10, 15, 20 pounds of worm castings or compost, it doesn't have to be worm castings, and brewing it this way, you are exploding the microbes throughout this. Now, you can take this, as Will said, dilute it um, with half water and half tea and just drench your garden drench your soil and it's going to add a lot of life you can literally see plants that are pale and struggling green up within yeah. hours like it's incredible we're actually brewing this because will's going to be using it on a biochar experiment that he's working on and he's going to be covering more of that on his channel so um i know a lot of you have already just started following him recently but i'll put a link to his channel in the description um, yeah, we're probably not going to dilute it for the biochar. The biochar is made to suck all this up. The, dil the dilution, it's it's best for the foliar feed. Right. We'll also spray this on the leaves of the plants. You don't want quite as strong as of uh, compost tea to spray on the, the the leaves. So with the soil drench, you can you can you might not even have to just dilute put it this on that straight. Much. You can just put this on because we have so much wood chip mulch. 
in our systems that you really don't have to dilute it, I don't think, for the wood chips. Right. The wood chips suck up are suck nitrogen up a lot anyways. So. so we're gonna go ahead and put about two handfuls of azomite. This is a 55-gallon 55, 55 drum, I don't know if we mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to put about two handfuls in there and then we're going to put some water in there and just get it to, to dissolve yeah. completely. So. Another thing, it is best to do this in like a 75 degree, 75 to like 80 degree environment. So that's why we're doing it in the greenhouse here because it is getting in the 50s overnight. You could probably do it and it'd be fine if it's in the 50s. You, but uh, if it got really cold, I, I wouldn't do this outside because the microbes right they, they like room temperature really the best uh one more thing when we do make this you do want to use it within about an hour because as soon as you stop aerating it the amount of microbes is going to start plummeting like that okay. so just use it quickly when you do make it we are brewing this for like a day and then applying it let's say you have it brewing in a day and you can't you don't have the time to apply it can you just leave it aerating for another yeah, day yeah. or a few days and mm -hmm. that's fine okay yeah i've heard people doing it for 24 to 48 hours okay all right so here in the bottom of the barrel you can see how the azomite's kind of settling on one side mm -hmm. and so this is where will was saying you want to make sure that's mixed in because essentially these air stones are going to go down to the bottom and we want to make sure there's nothing down there that's going to like gum up, gum them up and interfere with them aerating this yeah and you just want that in your solution as well you don't want it just all of sitting the, at all the of the azomite concentrated on the bottom it's not going to it's not right. going to be in your compost tea Will's going to take this five gallon bucket and mix in just a splash of the molasses mm -hmm. and a pretty good splash of the fish and seaweed fertilizer. Yeah, this is just a sugar source for the microbes. A lot of people that are doing like fungal dominated composts, they don't use molasses. Right. Um, fungal versus bacterial dominated. You can get really into fungal versus bacterially dominated compost teas. The uh, the fungal dominated teas are better for like perennial systems, whereas the bacterial the bacterial dominated compost tea is better for annual systems. I think the idea is annuals are like naturally in more disturbed areas where there's less fungus in the soil, I right. guess. And then trees are in older soils that have time to allow fungus. So I think over time, uh, over time they've evolved to, to prefer that type of soil right. for those things. But these are for annuals, so. We're going to go ahead and add the molasses and feed the bacteria. Yeah, this is seaweed. That's probably enough. Yep, so, molasses and seaweed, we're just going to mix that mm -hmm. in as well so it doesn't settle. Add a little water. Add a little water. Even when you do your dilution later, if you're doing a foliar spray on this, also make sure you use either well water or water that doesn't have chlorine in it in some way. So right now, this is a very fragrant experience. That fish emulsion is very ripe. However, that that's when you know it's done is when the compost tea actually, it's supposed to smell neutral. You're not supposed to be able to smell anything at all. If, if you smell something that either means it's not done processing or it actually went anaerobic. So just make sure you don't smell anything at all when you actually go to spray this on, on things. Now we're just gonna add it. Mm, micro. Mm -hmm. I said, mm, microbes. Drop these in there. You see, I tied the rocks a lot closer to the yeah. air stones because if it's a long rope, it's actually going it's not gonna be quite on the bottom. So. Yeah. And the cool thing about this is, if it's bubbling too much, you can turn. Like that one on, you can turn down okay. the air a little bit. Like if you feel like it's. So what is the right amount of bubbling? If you the book Teeming with Microbes actually has it in it. Put a link to that book in the description. But he actually like measures the bubble and like gets all the way down to like the the actual size bubble that you want. I guess it would be something like that is what most people. So we would call it mildly bubbly. Yeah, mildly. Like you don't want it. You don't want it like going crazy because yeah, well, then the air is not getting incorporated. It's going straight to the top. You can get real specific on that, but I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> Nobody else seems to be all that worried about it. All right, next step is just to 
put this on. You can pre-attach them if you want to. Now, for me, the reason this is so important is that it's completely scalable and it is a way to feed your soil and help your garden grow. A lot of people focus on feeding their plants. You can actually feed your plants and think you have a healthy garden, but your soil is in deficit. The beautiful thing about compost teas is that they really feed the soil. And healthy soil grows healthy plants. It's just the more sustainable approach to gardening. And so I think that everybody should learn this. I think this is something that is so scalable. You can do it for a couple of raised garden beds all the way up to where we're, you know, we have, I don't even know, how many square feet of garden here? 40,000 or something like that. Is that about right? Do we have 40,000 square feet? I have no idea. <laughs> we will someday. I remember figuring out that once it's all done, we'll have 40,000 square feet of growing stuff. Anyway, you can scale this from 100 square feet to thousands and thousands of square feet, and it's applicable. So in addition to being uh, just a fertilizer, it's also, it, it behaves like a like a probiotic for plants when you spray it, when you spray it on the leaves. But much like we need a diverse uh, gut microbiome to be healthy, the plant needs the same on its leaves. So it's very, it's very good for the immunity of the plant as well. It'll be a lot more resistant to diseases and potentially other pests as well. Yeah, and it's awesome. It's just awesome. Thanks really, for teaching yeah, us. It's cool, satisfying to make too. Yeah, it is. I am also going to make this into a blog post so that you don't have to come back and watch this whole video if you forgot one detail. Um, I'll have it all out in writing where you can access the links and the main points and all of that. So check that out at RootsandRefuge.com. The link to that will be below. I'll put that first um, as well as Will's channel where you can learn lots more stuff like this. All right. Yep. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Until next time.